catch them in the pasture, run them in the pen, work them up the Sundays, do it all again, race them in the sand, buck them in the mud, drip a cowboy's sweat, bleed a cowboy's blood. I'm Zeke Thurston, 2016 World Champion Saddlebrock Rider, and you're watching The Pepper Stewart Show. You did it again. You came back. You look, you're watching. So that's good. You must have been really bored. But we're here. We got a lot of stuff today. A lot of good stories for you. The odd news that everybody likes. Some more Guinness World Records. Somebody's breaking them. We're going to tell you about that. Uh, a couple of new shows coming out. We got uh, some cow stuff. We're going to talk about the heat in your cows. Uh, checking your tires while you're on the road. The sales coming up. Uh, the junior NFR going on in Cowtown. You got the Paint Horse uh, World Finals going on in uh, Fort Worth as well. But what we've got right now is for those of you that watch a lot of TV, which that's what a lot of people have been doing over the last year, watching a lot of TV because they've been stuck in the house. And uh, there's a TV show that's been out there for a while. I think you've seen it, especially if you're in Texas. Lone Star Law. You've been watching that. You're like, man. This show's got game wardens. They're talking about stuff. And I learned a lot of stuff watching that show. There's a lot of things I didn't know that I learned watching it from uh, the folks that are on there. So what we did is we found one and brought them here. And we're going to ask questions. And that's the man, the myth, the legend, Benny Richards is here. Good afternoon. I'm glad to have you. Good to be here. So tell us, uh, you've been a game warden for a long time. 25 years. What... Uh, what swayed you to uh, be a game warden? Well, you know, it started when I was really a, at an early age. I, I liked being in the outdoors, hunting and fishing. My eyes were open. I was daydreaming about hunting or fishing. And uh, there were a lot of mornings when I showed up to high school with waders on. And <laughs> I'd have to take them off and run in five minutes, you know, late for class. But I always had that desire to be in the outdoors. I didn't like being indoors. I didn't want to work at a nine-to-five job behind a desk or anything like that on a conveyor belt. So I always wanted to be outside. And after I got out of college... Um, I became a police officer in Richardson, Texas, and so I got into law enforcement, and I, I had a knack for it, and it just kind of blended, you know, lended itself my uh, love for the outdoors and law enforcement, and when you put those two together, you come up with a game warden. And <laughs> yeah. So I started pursuing that in about 1992, and it took me about three years to finally get on board, but they finally gave me my badge and gun and gave me a truck and <laughs> sent me to a little county <laughs> called Delta County, and yeah. and uh, the rest was history. I mean, it just, uh, I took it like it you know, like a duck to water, and it was the job for me. And actually, I tell everybody it wasn't a job. It was a way of life. Yeah. And when you go into that, is it, you know, being a police officer before, is that something that, that you need to do to be a game warden? Or can you just go learn, you know, how to be a game warden? How does that work? You know, it's not. It's not something that's absolutely necessary, but I think it helps because it gives you that law enforcement experience. And uh, that's, that, that helps a great deal. Military experience also giving you that uh, uh, self-control and the training you get uh, and your ability to make wise decisions. Those are all going to come in handy. So any kind of experience, military, or whether it be law enforcement, I think helps. It's not necessary, but it really does help. Yeah, because you're, when you're a game ward, you don't have, uh, you know, you don't have a set hours. You just, you just have correct. your territory and whatever's going on, you're, you're there. That's right. I mean, they, they tell you when you sign up for the gig, you're on duty. I mean, not on duty, but you're on call, uh, you know, 24 hours a day, every day of the year. So now you have days off, but if something comes up that requires your attention, you're expected to handle that call and it could come on your day off. Mm -hmm. It could come at two o'clock in the morning. So and especially like game wardens out in West Texas, they may be the only law enforcement on duty, uh, you know, after the sun goes down. So so, yeah, you've got set hours, but there are a lot of times they're interrupted by things that were unforeseen that you're, you're required to go handle. Yeah. All right. So now that you've uh, you retired. Correct. And 
you wrote a book. I did. About what you're saying. I did. So what all of you saying? <laughs> Let me, I, I brought a copy of it with me. Uh, right. Here's a copy of my book. Uh, and the title of it is Tales of a Texas Game Warden, What My Eyes Have Seen. And uh, it's a short book by design. <laughs> it's got 28 individual stories. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a real long book. I didn't want to bore anybody to death. But it's 28 stories that just really comes to my, you know, popped into my head uh, that, that has some significance. There are some tragic stories about some drownings and some other things that happened, some funny stories, some uh, odd stories. But like I said, there's 28 of them and nothing special about them other than that they just stuck in my head when I started writing the book. And kind of what brought the book about is I used to have a weekly column in a local paper. And I started writing that as just a way to keep people informed about law changes. Mm -hmm. And everybody said, hey, this is pretty neat. You know, and I started adding a few stories and everybody liked the stories. And the ladies at church said, why don't you write a book? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> three or four years later, it came to fruition and I, I wrote the book and it's so far, I've been very pleased, and it's been a success. Okay. Now, when the the show came out, or Lone Star Law, how did that how did that come to be? They just come out and say, "Hey, who who wants to be part of this?" Or how did that work? You know, that's a funny story, and actually, that's one of the chapters in my book. <laughs> hey, won't don't, you write through that? Spoil it. I'll give it. Yeah, I'll I'll give you a little bit of tidbit of information <laughs> that, that you won't have to buy the book to hear this story. Um, actually, when that first came about, I I did not want any part of it. And I'll tell you how that went. I was driving down a dusty road one day, and I get that little ping on my phone that tells me I've got an email. Mm -hmm. And I'm driving and looking, and I'm reading, and it's talking about this new TV show, and they want volunteer game wardens. And I stopped right there and said, I ain't got time for that. <laughs> and I just, I just deleted it. Well, about a week later, my captain called me. He said, hey, you remember that email about the, the TV show? And I said, yeah. So I deleted it. He said, I knew you would. <laughs> he said, but I want you to reconsider. And he said, because it's a national, you know, it's going to be on a national level, a mm -hmm. national national televised uh, show, and we want some senior game wardens with some experience to represent our part of the state uh, because everybody we're getting are rookies or mm -hmm. haven't been on board very long. So after a little bit of salesmanship, he, he, <laughs> he uh, convinced me to do it, and I'm glad he did because I, I went to the, the meeting, and then I, I met the uh, executive producer and the camera crews, and they started riding along with me, and, hey, it was – you know, it was a very good experience. I'm glad I changed my mind. I made a lot of new friends, and uh, we had a good time. And like I said, we documented some of the work I did, and it turned out to be a really, really good experience. Did it actually change anything as far as, you know, some of the interactions with people and stuff like that? They're like, oh, no, like, you know, even the people you're talking to, like, oh, he has a he has a camera crew with him or it something did. like that. We have to be on our best behavior, you know. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. And it's, well, something's funny about that. It took – the game warns a while to get used to that, but it also took the public. And I'll tell you what I'm talking about because we roll up to a trailer house with a arrest warrant for somebody, and and uh, Thelma and Uncle Eddie, <laughs> they would run out on the front porch thinking that they'd won publishers clearing out sweepstakes because <laughs> we were in you know two big black SUVs and there's cameras and they said we well, have one, and then I had to explain to them, no sir, <laughs> we're not here with publishers clearing out. <laughs> So, but no, it, uh, when that got started, you know, one of the things that I, I made myself a promise that I wasn't going to change anything I did because I wanted it to be as true life and real as possible. So, you know, I, I can't say that I did or said anything that I wouldn't have done if the cameras were there. And I, and I told the camera crews that there, we're not going to rehearse anything. It's going to be live, just like it would have happened if you weren't here. And that, you know, that personal policy of mine turned out pretty good for me. I feel like it did. Yeah, everybody <laughs> tells me I did a good job and they enjoyed watching it. So, hey, I've done my part. Excellent. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, it's still going. What, one of the questions that I see or when I'm watching the show a lot of times is the the guys deer hunting. Mm -hmm. And the big thing I see all the time is they come out, you come out to look, where's, where's your tag? Oh, I, I, I put the wrong tag or I put the. Musical deer tag. Yeah. That's what yeah. I, call it. <laughs> oh, I, I, I used the wrong one. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, they didn't use the wrong one. <laughs> you know, and I don't want to give away any secrets. People start doing things different. But I used to go to the meat locker over in Detroit, Texas, was one of the bigger ones that was in my area. And I go in there, and they may be 75, 100 deer in there around the holidays. Mm -hmm. And I would collect the tags, and I would sit down at my kitchen table that night and start going through them. Turkey tag red drum tag <laughs> you know, last year's tag so you know if i went through 7500 tags i would have you know anywhere maybe a dozen tags that people either 
knowing what they were doing yeah. or by accident would put the wrong tag on there and I'd have to go visit them. Yeah. So, well, that's, yeah. that's what I fear when I, you know, watch, watching the show and I see <laughs> that I'm thinking these guys, they, you know, they put their, their mule deer tag on the white tail just yeah. thinking, you know, the odds of me getting stopped before I get there. And then I got to get stopped. Oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't pay attention. I put the wrong tag. And the, and the state did something a few years back. They recreated that harvest log because a lot of people were, you know, coming up with excuses. Mm -hmm. and, and, and some people, some of them are valid and some of them are legit. But when they put that harvest log there where, you know, when you put a mule deer tag on there and you didn't have your harvest log filled in, that was like, okay, you did this and you didn't do this. Mm -hmm. But if you put a, a mule deer tag on it, but you logged it in as a white-tailed deer, yeah. we could say, hey, that was an honest mistake because you can see here he was, you know, he put a white-tailed deer. He just made a mistake there. But if he didn't put the tag on it and he didn't do the harvest log, we don't want to hear that. <laughs> Time to go see a judge. Oh, yeah. Well, it definitely made me actually pay a lot more attention because I, I, I love the show. Me and my family watch and, you know, going through and I love to hunt and I love to fish and right. all that. And after watching some of the things, you know, especially, you know, you've been through, I've seen you walk into those deer camps. Our family has one and all of a sudden see you walk in there and you're like, oh, well, there's this and there's that and there's this. And I was like, okay now last season i'm hunting and stuff and i'm like all right i gotta make sure i'm like sitting here writing stuff down i'm like okay this is the right one make sure i get the right date and i'm you know going through right. it actually made me double check myself mm -hmm. making sure that i was doing it right and you know what as a game warden uh and i tell younger game wardens you keep that in mind when you go in those deer camps these are not felons and outlaws <laughs> most of the time but, uh, uh, these are people out enjoying their family time and hunting and fishing and and you know don't go in there with a law book and start beating them over the head they're going to make mistakes and educate them. But you learn pretty quick the ones that need to be educated and the ones that need to be cited. <laughs> so, but yeah, we, you know, you go in there and it's a, it's a little bit different when it's a, a hunting camp and you're going to find those mistakes and just, you know, we tried to educate them a little bit. Some of them end up with a citation, but that's part of the you know nature of the business. That was something I did enjoy with you and, you know, a lot of the other game wardens as opposed to, you know, watching a show like Cops or something right. is that you would go in there and a lot of times you were like, hey, listen, I know you made a mistake. Mm -hmm. I know this was, you know, this was honest. I can tell, you know, or even a kid, you know, made, you're like, hey, well, let's, let's sit down. Let's have a chat. Mm -hmm. Here's where it is. Let me help you out. Make sure you don't do it again next right. time. And right. that I, you know, I really appreciate it as you can tell that you're somebody that actually, you know, you're trying to educate, you're trying to right. help, not just throw the book at somebody and me as a game warden my uh my approach to things changed over the years yeah when i was a younger game warden i was more reactive and i would go into those camps spend a lot of time in fishing camps hunting camps as i got older i realized that the really bad ones the ones that really needed my attention they weren't in those camps they were out at three o'clock in the morning running <laughs> on the highway with a spotlight and uh so i you know i spent less time in those camps and i spent more time out late at night or really, really early in the mornings when everybody's asleep and they're, you know, game wardens, they think game wardens aren't out, uh, trying to find those flagrant offenses, mm -hmm. people that, you know, it wasn't a mistake. They were out there intentionally harming the, uh, the wildlife population by the, what they were doing or hurting the environment or something like that. Yeah. And they're flagrant offenses. And that's, that's the ones that I want to get stopped and cleaned up. It's not the, the small mistakes. Yeah. You know. Hey, what about fishing? Did you do a lot of fish? Fish patrols? Sure, boat sure patrols. did. It's like anything else with a game warden. As the as the year changes and the calendar is going around, your job duties change. In the spring is when I checked a lot of fishermen. That's when the fish are up in the creeks and they're spawning and running. So, yeah, I checked a lot of fishermen in the springtime. And then as summer progressed, it's more boater safety. You're looking for those fire extinguishers, life jackets, trying to prevent drownings. And as the year goes along, then you get into dove season, September, and then the hunting you know, seasons start opening up one after another. And it's usually checking hunters, some fishermen, through, you know, January, February. And then it's kind of slow. Uh, you get the Super Bowl and a lot of football on TV. <laughs> Not many hunting seasons open. It's a good time to, you know, do some paperwork and then mm -hmm. start all over again in March and April when the fish start running again. What's one of the, the craziest things that you've seen oh, wow. while you're out in the field? Oh, wow. The craziest thing, you got to read my book because <laughs> there's some good stuff in there. I, it would be hard. It would be hard to narrow it down. It really would. Just, uh, guys, when you're a game, a game warden, you're out there in your truck and you're all alone and, and you, you see so many things. I can remember the, I don't know what year it was, uh, I'd been out working all night long and when the space shuttle exploded over Texas. Uh, I got um, this, yep. uh, I actually saw that because I was coming in early that morning. I, you know, I had no idea what it was. 
And I went in with the sleep. When I woke up again about 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, I, it's all over the news. And I said, well, that's what I was looking at. I didn't know what it was. Mm. So, and you know, it's hard to narrow down the craziest thing because there's a lot of crazy things. And thank God for stupid people <laughs> <laughs> because they are job security. Yeah. What, what about a good funny? You know, something even they said, you don't even, not even have to out of your book or anything, just something that you're like, hey, you know what? That, that tickled me or that was something that, you know, somebody did something okay. like that. Uh, well, I have to give you a very condensed, short version of it, but I can tell you one thing that's funny. I, I went to a poaching call. I uh, seized a doe, a deer that had just been killed, freshly killed, took the side. I, mean, I sent the, uh, the violator to jail with another game warning, and I took that doe, and I had it in the back of my truck. Well, as I left, I was kind of taking the country roads through back to town, and there was these two fellows right over the side of a barbed wire fence, and it turned out one of them, said he shot a, a doe deer and uh, they were looking for blood. And the other one was arguing and said, you did not hit that deer. You did not. And he said, yes, I did. It stumbled. And they were arguing. <laughs> and I listened to it a little bit and I said, hey, I said, come here, come here. I got your deer. And they, what are you talking about? <laughs> and and I, I went, I dropped the tailgate and both of them like, one guy said, I told you I hit that deer. And the other one said, I can't believe it. And, and how did you find it? And I said, well, when I topped the hill, it ran out in the middle of the road, you know, and fell dead. And I, I didn't know what was going on, so I loaded up. I didn't know y'all were down here, but there's your deer. And the guy, they drug it out. And they, I mean, they bit, you know, hook, line, and sinker. And the one guy was saying, man, this is going to make my wife proud. She said, I, he said, I come out every weekend. I never bring a deer back. But I got one now. <laughs> so they drove off happy, never knew, knew any different. See, that's a good story, though. You know, something, you know, you did nothing, you know, you took care of the, you know, the offense, but then you also, you know, made somebody yeah. else's day. For sure. Yeah, and that deer, I, you know, that's where I was headed to town to donate it, and I can't think of a better donation than that one. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, uh, before we get out of here, this book, where can this book be found? Okay. I get that question a lot. Uh, the best way to look is just on Amazon or Barnes & Noble's. I think Target.com has picked it up, so just get online and go to Amazon or one of those larger book retailers, and it, it should be listed. Uh, it's sixteen ninety five, practically giving it away, yeah. and uh, I think it's well worth the read. I hope everybody enjoys it as much as I enjoyed writing it. Uh, and the actually, it's been uh, the response and has been overwhelming. I've been very pleased, so I've, I've already convinced myself to write a companion book, <laughs> and uh, yeah. because it was well received, so. Hope everybody gets it, and I hope they enjoy it. All right. Excellent. We'll do it. That's Benny Richards. Check it out. Get his book. Go order it right now. Get it in your mailbox. And uh, we're going to take a short break, come back. Check out this tune by Jake Dodd. My name is Liz, and I've been a nurse for six years. I've got a husband. I've got a son. I've got a family. I've spent the last couple years in critical care. I spent a few years in detention as well, but the last few years, it's been critical care. I just worked five night shifts in a row, five 12 and a half hour overnights in a row. I tell you this much, as a nurse in critical care, we want our patients to live. We want them to live. That's like, that's what we do. That's what we're good at. We're good at keeping people alive. But we don't need the praise, but man, we could just. Scrub's got her hair pulled back She's clocking in but she just clocked out She didn't sign up for this But it is what it is Dug some baby in bed The night with a kiss Then she's out the door for a 12 hour shift The old day ends The second that hers begins She goes to work Getting to the front lines of the world She's a get your hands dirty, go get a kind of girl She's a breadwinner who cooks dinner And sacrifices a day in day out She goes to work every day with her heart on her sleeve On her paid overtime, set aside all her dreams She doesn't get the things that she deserves She goes to work Do you want to see the things she's seen? Hat pulled over her hair Heart breaking through that strong old stare Cause it's been six months since she's been
moving home, mama cries in the kitchen, daddy's on the phone, she says I love you, we'll talk soon, I gotta go. Get your hands dirty, go get them kind of girl. She's a breadwinner, cooks dinner, and sacrifices day in and day out. She goes to work every day with her heart on her sleeve, on the paid over town, set aside all her dreams. She doesn't get the things that she Hope you enjoyed that tune from Jake Dodd. The story behind that is uh, that's that song there. She goes to work is uh, it's a tribute to all the frontline ladies out there that are out there working. You know, nurses, mili- whether you're nursing in the hospital, or nursing in the military, it's kind of a kind of a uh, thank you to all that. So check it out. Uh, he'll probably be on the show. We'll have Jake on here. I believe. I think we've got him for next month august he should be here in august we'll be talking to him about that so let's talk about cow stuff cow stuff is hot in texas right now real hot so you want to keep your cows cooled off so the experts out there (laughs) sent us uh, sent us the five tips just a tip to keep your cows safe in the summer heat uh Number one, provide high quality forage. Make sure you got some high quality feed, which you want to do that all year round. Uh, offer shade when possible. Yes, cows need shade when it's hot. Shade them up. Uh, you know, keep them in the shade. You want to manage your flies. Fly management helps. Uh, always work your cattle early in the morning when it's hot. Work them in the morning or late in the evening. But in Texas, you want to work them early in the morning because if you work them late in the evening, the horse flies are going to eat you to death. So mark that now. Uh, appropriate water intake is key, which that's cows and people. Make sure you drink plenty of water throughout the day. So make sure your cows got access to water where they're not trekking two miles to go with something to drink. Make sure you keep water close. And uh, this number five, which is a no brainer, watch for heat stress and high risk cattle. You do that anyway. <laughs> you do that. You're always doing that. So, but that, that's that's just some tips that the experts put out for you about your cows. And then, uh, if you want to reduce your ways to reduce your cattle feed bill, uh, you're always looking for alternative ways as the uh, feed price rises. So let's see what uh, Eric Bailey had to say here. Uh, what do you want to do? Let's see. It said to cut the fat. Okay. So we cut the fat. Uh, Cattle should not be at a body score six or seven. Body condition score. He recommends a five for manager cows. Uh, Graze, but stockpile. That's good for your year to graze for your forage. Uh, Buy in bulk, which that's anything. Buy in bulk. When possible, buying bulk rations helps. Combine your forage and your feed. 
uh, alternative feeds. Uh, no self serve. Don't let them just eat all willy nilly. Feed them at certain times. Uh, balance your feed rotations. Graze quality for quality forage. What does that mean? That's an, who's out there grazing non quality. I mean, they're like here's here eat this, which I've heard at times. Uh, you know, with some of the round bales we've come across that we've had to put out and just tell them, hey, better than a snowball. So <laughs> eat it. So just work on that. Uh, cow stuff tires. I want to talk about tires. I've got a video out there somewhere about the tires. I put it out a couple years ago. I don't know. You can probably find it or not. But your tires in the summertime, especially in Texas, is hot, real hot. If your tires max at 80 pounds, don't run your tires at 80 pounds. Run them about 65 or 70. Because what's going to happen when you get on the highway and you're running about 70 miles an hour, 30, 45 minutes, your tire is going to be swole up and you're going to be at your 70 80 pounds but if you air your tire up to 80 pounds and you take off across the country and you wonder why your tires keep blowing out that's why don't don't max them out in the uh in the summertime and also if you have on your valve stems on your tires this happens to a lot of people if you have valve stems on your tires on your trailer make sure that they are still Use steel valve stems on your trailer because those little flimsy rubber ones do like this. Most of your trailers have your horse ties at the tires. And so everybody goes and ties a horse up right there at the tires and they wander off and do something else. Go see who's doing what or take a nap in the truck or hit the concession stand. And while you're gone, what's the horse doing? He's pawing the trailer or tire and he's pawing the valve stem and he, boom, your valve stem busted. You don't know it. You, you load up and leave and you get down the highway and then you hear that. You're like, what is that? No, how, how do I have a flat? That's how you had a flat. So pay attention. Uh, more cow stuff. The uh, working, I don't know, Super Associations. There's one, I go to both of them, but I think, I guess last week I was at the Working Ranch Championship. This week I'm at the Ranch Ch Championship. Ch I don't know. They're all. They're, but anyway, in Fort, in Fort Worth, the I guess it's the Working Ranch Challenge. I probably said that wrong. But the uh, APHA World Show is going on right now in Fort Worth. So go over there, watch the paint horses. And then on July the 4th, on a Sunday afternoon, they're going to have the uh, Working Ranch or the Ranch Work Championship. And that's where I'll be. So what is. Uh, going on in the rodeo world so over in the rodeo world we got a couple of things we're gonna jump over to reno uh clayton sellers wins reno for second division one extreme bulls victory of 2021 um the 2021 prca extreme bulls tour has treated clayton sellers extremely well florida native won his second division one event this season after winning reno extreme bulls on thursday night that was opening week of the reno rodeo Sellers walked away with the championship, 179 points on two head. Sellers also won uh, San Angelo uh, Extreme Bulls on April 18th. Sellers arrived in Reno 9th in the PRCA Ram World Standings and 2nd in the Extreme Bulls Standings. Uh, move up in both after earning $21,018. Uh, he earned $15,300 for his San Angelo performance. Uh, the last rider in the 12-man short round on Thursday, Sellers had a 90-and-a-half-point ride on Big Stone Rodeo's Renegade uh, to clinch the average victory. Uh, Sage Kimsey uh, finished second with 172 points on two head. Kimsey was the 2019 Reno Rodeo Extreme Bulls champion. Uh, Sellers, the two-time uh, National Finals Rodeo qualifier, 19-20, and 20, is extremely confident after his financial boost to begin that summer run and going into Cowboy Christmas. All right. Also, right here in the stockyards, uh, the Cowboy Channel is uh, broadcasting the Junior NFR. Uh, the Cowboy Channel and Junior Rodeo are excited to announce the 2021 Junior Finals Rodeo um, is carrying all the action. It kicked off June 28th. All the way into the last ride on July 3rd uh, via the PRCA um, on the Cowboy Channel Plus app. Uh, in addition, the Junior NFR semifinals and finals will be telecast on the Cowboy Channel itself. You can live stream all the events via PRCA on Cowboy Channel Plus app or live on the Cowboy Channel. 
uh, Junior NFR is underway in the historic Cowtown Coliseum <laughs> in Fort Worth uh, until July 3rd. Uh, Junior NFR features best of the best contestants in all youth rodeo and a tournament style rodeo competition with more than 500 contestants. That's a lot of kids. Yes, sir. Lots, lots lot. of young cowboys and cowgirls out there. The up and comers. Is yes, sir. Mosquito in here. The up and comers. <laughs> um, the up and comers. Okay. Speaking of rodeo, it's time for a it's time for a little uh, a little segment called unpopular opinions. People get angry when I talk about this, <laughs> but we're going to talk about bull riding. Oh, we're talking about rodeo stuff. We're talking about bull riding. The bull riders and the bull riding today. I know I'm gonna sound like an old an old fart, but it's it's so different. And I think that social media and the ability to have a camera in your pocket at all times has ruined uh, the future of bull riding because the kids today don't practice like they should. The stock they need to practice on is not as ready, readily available as it was. And I don't think the focus is there because I, I go to a lot of rodeos, announce a lot of rodeos to different places. And I notice things I've noticed over the years that you didn't see before. One of the things I noticed at the rodeos is a lot of these guys are tagging along their, their girlfriends behind the chutes. You don't, who does that? You don't drag them along behind the chutes. But the other thing is, Riding percentages, and everybody's going to tell me, well, the you know the bucking stock is somewhat stronger than it used to be. It is, but also, you need to go ride something. You know, go ride some steers. Go get a pen of Holsteins, you know, two-year Holstein steers, whatever. Go get on those and ride them, because what's happening to a lot of these kids is they're going to enter up in these rodeos they have no business entering up in, and so all they're doing every time they get on. They're getting slammed in the dirt. They're getting slammed in the dirt. And they're not learning anything. They're not building any confidence. But the problem that social media brings to that is these guys don't want to go to a practice pen and get on jump kickers because everybody around the pen has got their phones filming. And now they don't want to, anybody talking crap because they're out riding jump kickers. But that's what you need to do. You need to be out there getting on these jump kickers where you have the ability to work on your timing you know, you can work on your time and you can work on your focus. You can work on your confidence. You can work on your get off because once you get all that done, then everything else is muscle memory. Once you get that figured out and you've, and you've got it working, it's all muscle memory after that. And you'll realize it's different. So if you're going to go ride, go ride some smaller shows, go to some jackpots. Uh, but, but then again, you got to watch where you're going because you got a lot of these bull producers out there. It's got these hot hybrid two-year-olds. They're trying to get everybody to get on. And then that's what happened. They get out there with their girlfriend and they're like, oh yeah, I'm a bad bull rider. And so that's why on social media, TikTok, Snapchat, whatever, you see all these two-second bull rides, three-second bull rides. If it wasn't for filming these buck-off bull rides, there would not be hardly any bull rides on the internet. I said what I said. <laughs> And I'm going to come at you from a little bit of a different angle and say the cell phones and stuff have actually been good for the sport of rodeo because the ones that do practice, the ones that do get on those jump kickers, the ones that do put in that kind of work are filmed and they can watch every single one of their rides and they put in the time and they review it just like a quarterback reviews tape on Monday morning. So the ones that do put in the work, cell phones are actually good for them. But. Don't post it on social media. No. That's the I, thing. Yes. See, back in my day, you had the VHS. <laughs> the big VHS camera. <laughs> you know, you had somebody have VHS, they'd film it, and you go back and watch it. No big deal. You, didn't, you had to worry about what happened. So that's, which I guess is kind of good that there wasn't. Because in the old days, when I was out there, there would be so many videos of craziness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably good some of that wasn't on <laughs> film, actually. Yes. Oh, so since I've upset all the... Young bull riders. Let's go to, uh, <laughs> let's do some odd news. Let's, you got a sky, what's the skydiver doing? What is that? Oh my goodness. So we have a man in Nebraska. And this, and this falls along with our, I guess, 
uh, what every, every episode Guinness World Record? Something like that. I think we've done one every episode. We've, we've got to. Yes. Yeah. The people want to know. The people want to know about a naked man in Nebraska. Whoa. <laughs> Man in Nebraska, he set a new world record by completing 60 skydiving jumps in 24 hours in nothing but his safety equipment. Wow. It's it's cold up there. Isn't it? It's cold up high, isn't it? I, I mean, I, I don't know. I I didn't look. Because without the shrinkage, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> Something's going to get tangled up. So uh, I believe his name is Rian uh, Kanuf. Kenoff of Omaha said he contacted the Guinness World Records about setting the record for the most naked skydiving jumps <laughs> in 24 hours. The group said that he could create the new record category if he performed at least 25 jumps in the time period allowed. Kenoff said it's, a, it's an informal tradition for skydivers to perform their 100th jump in the nude. I, that's, I did not know that. And he came up with the idea to get to set this naked skydiving world record as a fundraiser for a mental health charity after the recent death of a friend. Said my friend uh, that we lost to mental health issues was about that was about that close to his hundredth jump. Uh, he attempt he his attempt raised money for the Movember Foundation, a charity dedicated to men's health and suicide prevention. Uh huh. Two and one. Yes, sir. He got two and one. He raised money for a good cause, and then he got to. Flash everyone through the sky a hundred times in a row. I mean, he created his own. I mean, they let him create his own world record. <laughs> I'm just thinking, did did he harness himself? Did someone else have to help hook him up? Did the the pilot not get blinded and have to focus? And then you got to think, okay, you did it once. You did, it, did you get now? Now I've seen skydiving before. I've seen how you land. Something like is. Is there some rug burn going on? You got some grass stains? I mean... Well, at least if he had grass stains, he doesn't have to worry about doing laundry. No. Look like a bull with guacamole. Because <laughs> <laughs> that would probably happen. What other records you got? Everybody wants to break records. We have another one uh, from the UK. Going back, over, go back across the pond. For a British man, broke an unusual Guinness World Record by stacking five M&M candies. Five. Will Cutbill, 23, of England, said he had long dreamed of getting his name in the Guinness Book of World Records. And during the COVID-19 lockdown, he decided to make his dream a reality by stacking M&Ms. He said he filmed his attempts for two or three hours before he managed to get his stack of five <laughs> M&Ms. Uh, it's not something I'd normally have taken the time to do, especially now that the sun is shining and the pubs are back open. But at the time, there wasn't much else to do, <laughs> and it seemed like time well spent. Uh -huh. uh, the record of four M&Ms had been jointly held by Silvio Saba of Italy and uh, Brendan Kelby of Australia uh, before the record-keeping organization verified Cut Bill's video and issued him the certificate. So hmm. that's, I guess that's all it takes. That's but it. my question is are they stacked this way? Yeah. Or is it this way? No, that way. No, this, that way. Yeah. This way? Oh, okay. That way. <laughs> oh, there we go. We <laughs> have a, we have a picture of it. There's actually a video. I watched some of the video, but yeah, he was he worked at I think he worked at it for a couple of hours. Yeah, it said uh let's see, yeah, two or three yeah. hours it took him to stack five M Ms. He's bored. Have you heard of this show? Some kind of show called Mayor. It's called Mayor of East Town. Yes, sir. But, uh, but it's spelled Mayor like a horse. Yes. So my wife actually watches that show mayor of east town and that's uh the woman's name have you been to her house why would i go to her house that's what i want to know let's find out hbo hit series mayor of east town brought a whole lot of attention to delco culture most of that attention is more than welcome but not all of it action news reporter dan quayar explains mayor the HBO limited series Mystery Murder Caper centers on Mayor Sheehan, a vape-smoking, rolling rock-drinking detective played by Kate Winslet. Mayor of Easttown has received wide acclaim and positive reviews, and fans can't stop talking about Winslet's ability to capture that Delaware County accent that highlights the show's authenticity. But success has brought unintended consequences in places where the series was filmed. We get it's, it's, it's an attraction, and, you know, HBO has had a... Looks like a pretty big movie here now. Um, but 
these people live here. Fans have been flocking to Wallingford, Delaware County in droves where key parts of the series were filmed, including where the fictional mayor character lived. The real homeowner asked that we not use her name or address. So we've had a few instances where people have come onto our property, one late at night to look in our front window. I suppose I can only guess to see if it's the same as where they filmed. She says she has one woman the police stopped taking pictures because she and her children were playing on their front yard. She says the lady cursed at her. She just yelled at me and cursed harassed at me. You? Yes, she harassed me. It's gotten that ugly now. Yeah. Going on somebody's property, harassing them, foul language, blocking the street. It's it's not needed, and you know, to be totally honest, with you, it's disrespectful. One publication actually encouraged people to stock the properties and listed the actual addresses, while also telling people not to trespass or bother the residents. But Nether Providence police have had to increase patrols in the area due to a number of complaints from residents. How would you like it if somebody's looking through your windows, you know, and, and walking up onto your property? This homeowner has had to post no trespassing and private property signs on her property. She says her little girl has become fearful of all the people flocking to their home. She's afraid to go outside she's afraid to play um, and it's become a concern to us because it's concerning to her so police are warning people that trespassers blocking traffic disturbing the peace etc will not be tolerated and that appropriate action will be taken in wallingford i'm dan Quayar, channel six action news yeah so i i don't get it i mean what i but i guess you know people do that because uh tex that was on the show for years old tex that was here he was a big fan of Heartland, and he was always wanting to go to the Heartland Ranch, wherever it was, and then he realized it was not a real place. <laughs> and then you've got you've got your uh, your Yellowstone fans that all want to go to the Chief Joseph Ranch up there and check out the place where the show films. Speaking of the show filming, uh, everybody keeps asking about the release date. It's coming out in the fall, okay? It's coming out in the fall. But this uh, weekend, the July 4th weekend, depending on when you're watching, uh, they're going to marathon that sucker again, starting on Saturday, so you can watch all three seasons if you have not seen it. But yeah, I guess people, they get, uh, I guess some people don't have, you know, reality, fantasy, in some minds it, it intertwines, I guess. I have no idea, but... All I'm going to say is that walking on my property late at night would probably not be the best idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were they, where are they at? Where were they at again? Pennsylvania? Uh, Pennsylvania, I believe. What's their... They have, what's, they have guns there? I have no idea. Or two by fours? I, they have at least those. You may walk around two by four and start hitting people. They'll probably <laughs> stop walking on your property. <laughs> All right. So I think we're going over to a new Netflix show. Speaking yes. of TV. So, we have Sexy Beasts. Netflix uh, <laughs> shares a teaser for a new dating show. They're given a glimpse into a new series called Sexy Beasts. <laughs> the streaming service shared a teaser for the dating reality series on Wednesday. Do we have any, do we have any, film, do we have any footage of that? We do. We do. <laughs> you want to see this? I want to get married. I want to have babies. Before I'm like 26, do you have health insurance? Welcome to the strangest blind date ever. Hey, how you doing? Damn, how you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> Could you fall in love with someone based on personality alone? What is your ideal woman? Personality for me is everything. Ash first, personality second. You're the best looking devil I've ever seen. This is really weird right now. <laughs> Would you count this as a weird experience for you? Cheers. Cheers. Uh, so, I like your fin. <laughs> so what if I pick you and I'm not what you expect underneath? Oh my god! <laughs> I've kissed this girl and I don't know what she looks like. I'm literally just like in love with the moment. Pull. Oh! Flip it, flip it, flip it, flip it, flip it. <laughs> oh! Time has come. This is gonna be really tough for me. I can't choose both of you. I've made my decision. My sexy beast is... There's interspecies relationships happening on my grounds. I won't stand for it. Uh, oh man, July twenty first. Check that out. That's and you know you got to think it's a TV show. They're doing TV. They do you know on TV they do bachelors. They do all this. It just, they're not gonna have you know the people from Thousand Pound Sisters on this show. Yeah. So you think it can't be 
that bad. It's not going to be people that are ridiculous or body, you know, deformations or whatever. The, the hate mail box is fixing to open up. <laughs> <laughs> Cancel culture is coming right now. But if you get what I'm saying, you're not going to have... Uh, I'm trying to think of the name. You know, the old show Beauty and the Beast it used to be on. You're not going to have a person oh, that yeah. looks like that in real life on a show like this. It's going to be decent people, but or decent looking people that you're going to want to see on TV. Definitely. That they're going to want to see in their after hours, you know, at after dark show they're going to do probably later. But <laughs> so it's, it goes back, you know, when I was, when I was looking at this, it goes back into the old days before the internet, which was a great time. It was a great, back in the nineties, early nineties was a perfect time. No internet, no cell phones were spotty. I think I paid 25 cents a minute to use my cell phone. And it was a great time. But it reminds me back to those days when you had, uh, I think it was called Nightline and something else. And they were 1-800 dating service, dating numbers. And you would, like a party line, chat line. And you would call the number and you'd, you'd scroll through the different people. We were back, this was back in the, in the 90s, we were in high school. We thought this was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> and so we'd go through there and scroll through and you listen to people and then you could like hit a button or whatever and you could talk to them you can't see them or anything because it's the 90s of course but you could talk and you could hear and you you could have conversations or whatever and then some of the guys would want to they were going to go meet these girls so of course they would tell them hey i'm going to be at so-and-so in a red shirt you know blah blah of course not in a red shirt but just to see what shows up and you'd be surprised at what shows up <laughs> They're not going to be on that show. <laughs> oh, I cannot imagine. I, yeah, that's, I got, I got nothing else. That's, that's, I got nothing else. <laughs> Send your cancel, cancel culture hate mail to at pepperstewart.com. <laughs> and while you're there, buy a t-shirt. If you're going to, if you're going to send a crappy email, like some of you do, at least buy a t-shirt. There's something for everybody. What else we got? Oh, we got a, we got another a movie coming out based on real stuff let's see inspired by true events and based on the 2019 podcast the same name the shrink next door centers on a bizarre relationship between a psychiatrist to the stars dr isaac ike <laughs> yeah can't that? pronounce that name <laughs> and his long-term patient martin marty markowitz this looks interesting Tell me about yourself. Everything is fine. How's the situation with your sister? Fine. And how's the work? It's fine. <sighs> you know what word I'm getting a little tired of hearing from you, Marty? The F word. Everything is not fine. You're a nice guy. I'm not gonna let anyone use you. Therapy works. It's empowering. It's liberating. I feel like I'm on drugs. <laughs> I mean, I've never taken them before, but I mean, I assume this is what drugs feel like. I don't care what you say anymore. This is my life. Doc is a little unconventional. I don't trust him. Go ahead with your own life. Leave me Marty, I have your best interest at heart. But without trust, we have nothing. I do trust you. I trust you completely. I do believe you have just had what we head shrinkers call a breakthrough. <laughs> Jesus. And we're out of time. Oh. Leave me alone. So I don't know. I mean, it looks it looks interesting. Yeah, I well, mean, it, I I don't I don't know. It seems like there could be maybe a happy story behind it, but then there was some kind of ominous <laughs> stuff in there too. I don't know exactly how to feel about it. It could go dark. It could go dark. What? So what? Uh, Netflix. What I watched recently. I'm trying to think what I saw. I started to watch that Manifest on Netflix. It seems all right. A few episodes in, but I'm not sure. Oh, I did finish. Uh, 
for those of you watching working moms people are like what he watches that yes because at season one episode one the first like five seconds i was like wait what the heck is this show about so i ended up watching it anyway uh season four is out on netflix in the usa and i believe in the uk so you can catch season fours it's a i know it's a funny show if you're into funny shows nice kind of kind of off the wall and funny stuff happens on that show so it's pretty good their their season four they kind of threw a few uh jabs at corona time <laughs> but they're in canada it's a canadian show filmed in canada so nice but it was pretty pretty uh interesting i'm trying to think what else i've watched we're currently uh watching uh the new season of hell's kitchen right Ooh. now okay. we, me and my wife has fallen in love with that one so watching gordon it's now about the young guns all these 20 21 22 23 year old chefs coming into and he's he's treating them like they're you know big dogs and it is rather entertaining so wow. if you if you like watching uh if you like good food they have some cool celebrities on there and you get to watch gordon ramsay yell at people and his super thick accent and it's awesome those young those young snowballers in there you have some flakes flying around. they get upset or they... oh yeah Oh yeah, lot lots of tears are flowing. <laughs> <laughs> I, could just, I could just imagine, just imagine. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, I guess we told you everything that's going on this week. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks for another, another one. Uh, those of you that are that watch and don't listen, you can listen to this. Sh the show is available to listen to on pretty much every streaming. Uh, audio podcast place there is your Alexa, your iHeart, your uh, iTunes, whatever, whatever. If there's a podcast outlet, it's on it. So you can listen, you can always listen to it. You can always watch it. Uh, Farm Ranch TV is where you can always find it. They usually, uh, we, once we're live, they usually load these the following week on demand. And Farm and Ranch TV is free, by the way, free. It's not like Cowboy Channel, Ride TV, none of the other uh, streaming sites. It is free. So. All you got internet, you can watch. So with that, you got anything else? No, sir. I think I'm good. Time to hit the highways and byways of Texas because we're gone. <laughs>